Welcome back to Hard West. I have Bob Moss here. Hello. Hello, Fire Reviewer, the executioner of Innocence. the cultists. Oh, yeah. Cultists in this case. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to head straight up to the Fate Trader. Um, yes. Just to. I got 120. It's worth having a look. So we come across a puny dwarf with a battered cart. And after his toothless smile, we can take a look. Uh, some, so there's some items from previous what things get put in here. So we can buy the relic, that rifle that I really like. That was pretty good, yeah. Um, what do the boots do? Uh, just extra damage, which is also really nice, but a reduction mm -hmm. of hit points. But I don't like it takes up that slot, which I end up putting luck items yeah. in. But I like this bone hand rifle. It's pretty nice. That was pretty nice, yes. So I'm going to buy that. All right. And then that will be it. I just want that. Mm. Okay. Uh, oh, cancel. Uh, trade. Yeah, that's a bit of a weird UI mechanic there. All right. And let's see if we can recruit someone. Okay. Camp was nearly deserted. Only a couple of sentries remained. Burns was nowhere to be seen. As an outlaw, approaching openly would guarantee a hostile response. You could take the men out one by one, but it would likely yield less information about where Burns was. Mm. Um, we can sneak into the camp or decide to kill them all. Let's sneak. Sneaky, sneaky. Uh, yeah, I guess. Maybe. We're, we're on our own, so yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that it's easier to be sneaky when there's just one man. Sneaking past the guards is simple. We see a sergeant talking with one of his subordinates and managed to eavesdrop on their conversation. Seems Burns was leading attack on a nearby Indian village. Um, we can gain more insights if we continue, or we can steal provisions and get out of there. I say just steal and get out. Um, as you point out, we are alone, uh, and we have other places to look at. So, yeah, I uh, agree. Don't need to... Presumably also come back. Yeah, so let's go to... Um, the massacre site then oh yeah that's uh not foreboding at all yeah well that's they went to the indian and, and tried to destroy them all a plume of smoke visible from miles away guides us to the site of the pacification the village was in ruins littered with body parts the army had not even spared the women and children the place was deserted save for a single figure sitting on a rock his head in his hands no we approach him it's jefferson burns your mangled visage seemed to convince Burns that you were the devil incarnate. He said he was ready for his punishment. Um, we can ask him which crimes were heaviest on his soul. Or we can okay. explain to him and say we need help. We can pose an army officer. Or the told him his punishment would be to do your bidding. Um, I'd say let's first ask him what's what's bothering him. And then we Get can an insight. Yeah, 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 I agree. So Ben said you couldn't be the devil if you didn't know his sins. Still, Oops. he was compelled to tell you the attack on the village. Everyone had been killed except for a small group of natives who had escaped to their holy grounds. He said the screams of his victims would haunt him until he died, and it was filled with existential dread. His faith shattered. He said he was unable to continue. Um, well, let's explain. Let's be honest. Yeah, know. let's be let's be the good guys as much as we can. Burns would never accept another mission. He had dismissed his men and abandoned his command. A treasonous deed he would surely hang for. He said if you wanted help on your mission, you should seek out the tribesmen who had escaped to their holy grounds. They would be hungry for revenge. Unable to convince him to join you, we head out. As we depart, we hear a single gunshot behind us. Burns had joined his victims. He leaves pathetic remains out looking back, so we failed to recruit him. Okay. Damn. Well, All right. Okay, we, we are too nice, I guess. Yes, yeah, so let's go recruit the Avenger. You follow a trail of blood and bodies to a giant twisted red leaf tree surrounded by greys. We navigate the tall grass carefully, looking for signs of surviving natives. We inch forward, guns drawn. A whisper in a foreign tongue behind you gives you a start. You raise your hands and turn slowly. Behind the barrel of, of a precision rifle was a painted face for a tribal warrior. He was wounded, but his hands were steadied. He gestured for you to leave this place. The only English words you could make out were dark demon. 
You sh shake your head, need warrior's permission, or you told me you're the spirit of vengeance. Come to grant him an opportunity to set things right. Should we do that? Well, last time we were honest and we got rubbish. screwed over. So this time we were lying. We will probably get screwed over, but give it a try. Yeah, let's try it. He snorted, gestured you again, said, Black demon. After he paused, he added another single word. Why? He wanted to know why a black demon like you would help a native warrior get revenge. It was a fair question. Mm. You tell him with a spirit of revenge, then you pound to mind your story to him. As you related your tale, he maintained a... So it's kind of true, we are like a demon mm. of, re of revenge. Yeah, we kind of are, yeah. So as you related your tale, you maintained a solemn expression and kept the gun's barrel aimed at your head. Still, with each part of the story, you could see glints of understanding in his eyes, along with the fire of revenge. When you finished, he raised his gun, he pointed at you, and then at himself, and said yes. Hmm. Next okay, so we have Chevao. Yeah. Henry Persons, a former Pinkerton agent. So, crime lord would know where to find them. we get... To ask a whiz about two other people, Harden and Persons. Um, so we'll go there in a second. But we have managed to recruit a tactical sniper. Um, on the world map, he's good at wilderness survival. Okay. Okay. Um, Shall we maybe... Wasn't there... If you go south, there was uh, the Matthew's tomb. Matthew's tomb. Yeah, yeah shall there. we check that out? Tomb of Matthew the Evangelist. We arrive at a burial place. It was reputed to belong to one of the four evangelists, a gang of four brothers named Mark, Matt, Luke, and John, which is the, the name of the people who wrote the uh, New Testament. Mm. Um, a disfigured vagrant sat on the tomb. He presented himself as Necator, a seer. He told you that each of the brothers' tombs contained an inscription that told part of their story. If someone read the story in correct order, it would reveal the location of the gang's stash. So we're looking at Matthew's tomb... Uh, we read the inscription. Okay. Mark was the eldest, and the others had always followed his orders. But John harbored a secret bitterness. When they finally tracked down the masked doctors responsible for the atrocities, he disobeyed his eldest command to provide cover. Without his brother's protection, Matthew was riddled by bullets. They buried him here. Okay. So we've got to decide on the order of these stories. So that's uh, Matthew... Yeah, Matthew the Evangelist. So, okay, I and took it's... a screenshot of that. Um, if I can, yep, there we go. So this All is definitely right. not the first one, I don't think. No, I don't think so either. Um, but we will, you know. Let's go it's... do this little mini thing. It's sounds, sure. It's, it's kind of fun. So we'll go to Luke's tomb next. Um, so this is a symbol of medicine. All right. Um, John drifted alone, rootless and without purpose. Finally tired of being outgunned and outnumbered, he decided he could not continue. He was on, he was on preparing to take his own miserable life when Luke returned, bent on reconciliation. He had found some needs on the masked doctors and the time to strike was now. So that's definitely not first. No. Okay. Right, next one, Mark. Mark's tomb was almost, but the inscription was still, in, uh, was almost succumbed to the elements, but the inscription was still in good condition. Mm -hmm. The hearse was not carrying the worldly remnants of the departed to distant soil. Instead, it contained living human parts kept alive in jars by electricity and eldritch bombs. Mark was resolute. Whoever did this must pay. John and Matt disagreed. For the first time, the brothers were divided. Hmm. Hmm. Sleeve, that might be the first one. Mm, I think that's probably like the second. Yeah, or the third. Yeah, second one maybe. And here's John. Um, red sandstone. So I don't know if that's any clues. But the brothers fell into disarray. Mark blamed John. John Mark blamed Mark and Luke, who had always brokered their peace, was powerless to reconcile them. Tempers escalated until John drew on Mark and another brother fell, this time by the hands of his own king. It was the end of the evangelists. So maybe this is the last one. That should be the last one, I think. Okay. So the hearse was carrying as one. John drifted alone. That doesn't seem like the first one either. Um, so I'm thinking... Uh, 
Because you've no. got them all, haven't you? I got them all. So... There's no real beginning, but... So the Tomb of Mark begins, the hearse was not carrying the wealthy remains, blah, 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 blah. So that could be the beginning, actually. Uh, no. Tomb of Luke ends with he had found some leads on the masked doctors and time to strike was now. So it says here, the beginning of the story was Matt, Mark, Luke or John. And then they've got like a test of agility, test of emotion, test of recovery, test of reaction. So in Matthew's, uh, Matthew died. Um... Okay. Uh, they they when they finally track down the mass doctors responsible for the atrocities. Um, so the hearse was not carrying the world remains of the departed. Uh, I think we may have to sort this out after the episode. They are all not very. It's, you know, like, it's, it's a super continuous story, I think. Oh, I've, I can't back out now. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> so oh. I have to make it go. Oh, 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 damn it. Um. So, we could track who's alive and when, right? So, when is, uh, when do people die for definite? So, in Matthew's text, Matthew dies. Okay. Um, and the one where we think it's the last one where they all blame each other um, um, how many are alive there? Um, so the last one has got to be John because it says that it was the end of the evangelists mm. uh, I'm thinking Although, yeah, it, that has got to be the last. I'm fairly sure of it, John. So in Luke's, John finds uh, is drifting alone, uh, rootless without purpose. Finally, tired of being outgunned and outnumbered, he decided he could not continue. He was on preparing to take his own miserable life when Luke returned, bent on reconciliation. He had found some leads on the masked doctors. And time to strike was now. So John was alone, and then Luke shows up, and they decide to go after the masked doctors. Yeah. Um, they. Hmm. John and Matt. And Matt is good. This is annoying. <laughs> she pulls recording. Yes, uh, okay. you may have to cut out part of this. I will pause the recording. All right, I thought about it, and I'm going to go with uh, this. So I'm going to go with Marks, which talks about the hearth and their their potential planning of uh, of an attack. Then second is Matt's story, where um, I think they. Uh, Discuss Matt. how they go on. Um, Matt dies in Matt's stories is basically the key feature of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they basically... Um, because because um, John fails to provide cover, right? When they're fighting the masked doctors. Oh, okay. Then Matt dies. Then, uh, because of Matt's death, in John's story, all the rest of the brothers start an argument and... It says it's the end of the evangelist. Then in Luke's story, um, it's Lu is it Luke on it is now on his own. The rest of the brothers forgive each other, and uh, then they strike out again at the masked man. So that's what I think it is. So right. I'm going to go with that. So Mark, Matt, John. And Luke, the test of recovery. So that's recovering from their stuff. Um, letters formed words, and the words formed sentences. They spell that location of the four evangelists' secret Congratulations. Stash. It was right. Okay, cool. That was hard. That's because I used to do that. Mm.
Sweet. So let's go check out the stash, shall we? Yes. Unless, unless we're worried it's going to cause combat. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong, dude? Yeah, let's do it. Fuck it. <laughs> Why not? A bland unmarked grave matches the directions decrypted from the evangelist tomb's inscriptions. Your long digging effort was rewarded with findings of substantial material value. Um, we get a one-armed bandit, a bulletproof vest, medical bag, and stump bomb. Oh, this looks good. Bulletproof vest is also always awesome. One-armed bandit is a short-range, high-damage, one-ammo shotgun, I guess. Yeah, take a look at the 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 sniper we got. He may not have a short range weapon at all. Um, oh, he's got. Well, I'm going to switch out the shotgun for the one arm bandit and then switch his pistol out for the long okay. range. Yeah, that works. At least for now. Then the other guy, he's got a, um, a rifle and then oh. a pistol. Okay. So yeah. that's fine. <clears throat> I mean, I guess could we swap the pistol for a shotgun, but I think this works. Mm. Um, we'll work out which... I mean, probably the bulletproof vest will go on this guy because he's got zero defense at the moment. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But we'll deal with that properly afterwards. Sure. All right. uh, let's go and ask wow. the wizard about... Yeah, we got person. done with that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hard. Right, the dazzling house of Peculiar and Strange. Your party came upon a circus tent set up incongruously... Incongruously... In the middle of the band, lads. That's a hard word to say. Yeah. As you neared, you saw it was surrounded by armed men wearing clown makeup. Oh, scary. A, cell, a sign read, The Dazzling House of Peculiar and Strange. Your previous travels told you this was the El Greto Mystics gang. Their leader, Wizard El Greto, had a reputation for making things and people disappear without a trace. Um, the house offered all sorts of cheap entertainment. We can also see the wizard. Oh, I think I'll uh, just go and watch the show. Sure. I'm, oh, let's just hope it Wizard doesn't make himself disappear. The show advertised Grunks, a wild beast of uncanny strength. But while Grunks was very hairy, he was definitely human. His act consisted of lifting increasingly heavy objects. After every feat, the audience demanded more and Grunks obliged, until on lifting the heaviest object on stage, a loud crack resounded across the tent, and mighty Grunks fell to the ground and was carried away by other strong men. So, Grunks is a strength guy, but he's just injured himself. Yeah. Okay. Let's watch another show. Sure. Ixnay Josh and Jamie Harris were a knife-throwing act. The woman bore numerous scars, and Ixnay Josh was missing a couple of fingers. Still, his mm. aim was unerring, despite his obvious affinity for strong liqueur. So, oh. someone with really good aim is, is Ixnay Josh, I guess. Yeah. But, mm, we are not very rich. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I'm going to watch another show anyway, because this All is right. intriguing to me. A gypsy fortune teller was reading palms to the patrons. According to her sign, she was Daciana Vaduva, mystic seer. As we approach, she becomes fixated on you. Her horrified mouth agap. Finally, she screamed, Foul, oh, Hellion, I never laid a hand on those puppies. And slammed her kiosk shut and ran away. I still I want to watch another show. This is brilliant. Okay. This will be the last one. Um, hey, oh. Uh, oh, no, it isn't. Phoenix Jarakif was a fire dancer who leapt through blazing loops, hooped over burning poles and blew giant plumes of fire from her mouth. She crowned her act by taking a cigar from one of the gawking spectators with her foot and lighting it with a fiery plume and returning it to the patron's mouth. As she bowed, people show, showered her with dimes. Let's go see the wizard now. Yeah. It was fun, though. Um, a tall gaunt man introduced himself as Sean Vermillion. He said the wizard was waiting for you and offered you a complimentary drink. A single shot glass filled with a cold yellowish liquid sat on a tray. They look at me expectantly. Uh, we could down the glass... Or push the tray back, saying we can save drinking for after <sighs> business was done. So the risk here is that if we if we refuse, we're being uh, rude, impolite, yeah. And if we accept it, it's probably gonna be poison of some sort. Uh, I'd probably err on the side of caution here. Me? I'm gonna down the glass. Screw really? it. Yeah. Okay. Familiar led you through dark corridors lined with colorful circus posters. Finally, you passed through a flap door and into complete darkness. Vermilion was nowhere to be seen. You're trying to make out what might be in the dark room when, with a heavy funk of machinery, a single spotlight appeared. A tall figure stood in it, wearing some sort of cloak. 
We want to walk towards the figure, but my legs didn't react. She just stood there watching. <coughs> a sudden flash of light blinded you, the shock making you fall to the ground. When you open your eyes, the room was brightly lit by floating orbs of cold blue light. A short, bald man wearing a long robe and strange eyeglasses st stands above you. Storn uh, Sean Vermillion stood behind him. The small man presented himself as Wizard Algretto and claimed he had business with you. He told you to nod your head if you wanted a lengthy explanation. I'll take it if you want to cut to the chase. Hmm. <coughs> and let's just cut to the chase. Yeah. Um... The wizard gives you a half smile and said he knew who you were and who we're looking for and that you give up now. The wizard considered Hardin his property and said the man was currently detained where he belonged. Persons, on the other hand, the insane former Pinkerton was yours for the taking. However, for in order to make him emerge from hiding, you would need to collect all four pieces of a strange meteorite Persons was obsessed with. <clears throat> Okay, so we're not going to get hard in, we're just going to get Purse in. Okay, Wizard's Goons takes us away. On the way out, a queer fellow tapped you on the shoulder. He said something about recognising a fellow connoisseur and bit hard into your flesh. We pushed him away and he quickly retreated, tipping his hat. For the rest of the day, you had a strange aftertaste in your mouth. What the hell is going on? <coughs> so we've got loads That's of locations. You, we shouldn't have drank the liquid. Maybe. Um, did that injure us or anything? Um, I don't think I had, no. No, okay. Um, so we've got the Vaquero, the Brothel, the Church, the Cougar Trails, the Nomad, uh, Nomad Shaman, the Rogers Tannery, the Quack Wagon, uh, the Necropoli uh, Necropolis, the Orchid House. Okay. Yeah. There's loads a lot of locations. lava over there, isn't there? Oh, and the illegal mines. I want to go to uh, Necropolis. Sure. Sounds like a place for meteorites. And you know, sort of like home. You arrive in the area dominated by sinkholes and mud pits. It serves a graveyard of sorts, allowing coffins to simply sink into the bog was highly economical. Your reflections were interrupted by the sight of a tall figure pacing back and forth across the necropolis. In the morning mist of the surreal landscape, he looked like an apparition, dressed all in black and carrying a shovel. Uh, a shovel. <laughs> he looked so he must be an undertaker. If you rumours about, uh, mm. what, if rumours about like that hunting for you were true, this man could be dangerous. We can snipe him from afar or try to. No, no, no. Yes, yes. I have this suspicion. This could be your father. Yeah, let's try and find out his identity. Yes, let's do that. The man's polite greeting turned to excitement as he realised who you were. His name was Shane Carter Holmes and he recognised you for the hunt for the masked man. Between coffins and funeral services, your one-man slaughterhouse routine, as he called it, made him a, petty, a pretty penny. Mm. He'd be looking for you for weeks to express his thanks. He handed you a stack of useful items, including cash and a piece of the meteor. Perfect. Well, not our father, but, you know, next best thing. Wow. The piece of the meteor in your hand uh, heated up, melted and sank into your skin. You feel empowered, but if you want to collect these pieces to drive persons out of hiding, you have to avoid burning them up. Okay. Okay. What did dust give us? Plus sight, we got plus 20 sight, yeah. Okay. That's nice, I guess. Okay. Um... Shall we visit the brothel? Yeah, okay. Let's go visit the brothel. You know, the sylph didn't work out, so... I doubt he'll... Oh, there's four remaining pe meteor pieces. So it might be here. You arrived at a well-maintained farm con composed of several large bungalows, all with extensive red lighting. Emma Bye-Bye's debaucherous establishment was known for its, its security. The place was guided by the same women who worked the clients. Only a fool would cross them. Um, mm. The bar or the lobby? Um, um, I'd say main lobby. I mean... We have liquor. Okay. Uh, I don't think we do, don't anymore. But anyway, the brothel was a large complex. A gaggle of gunslingers hang around in the, in its bar. The kitchen behind the counter led to an open courtyard, but you were forbidden from going there. 
You're allowed in the lobby where the women watch you with distrust while doing their best to look seductive. Emma, bye bye. The establishment ma madam remained in her office. Um, no, and then we returned done. to the bar. Yeah. The bar is about as busy as a private room with the women working both as bouncers and waitresses. You notice some for carers sitting around the table. If you were uh, picking fights, them fellas could be a heap of trouble. Apart from them, though, it was mainly old ranchers gambling and sippling their booze. Uh, we could lighten the mood by buying everyone a drink. Uh, we got the money for it. Mm. Um, we could ask about Randy Hardin. Or we could ask for their, their drinks. Let's buy everyone a drink, fuck it. Sure, why not? Our generous offer met with cheering and murmurs. The carers particularly appreciated the gestures and went about rehydrating themselves with tequila. Um, let's ask the barmaid about... Yeah, sure. <laughs> Gotta make some, some sort of uh, use of the situation. When the girl made a face, you knew you'd hit the jackpot. She went to a building across the farm. Hardin was there. She said, detained on orders from the wizard himself, which no one could figure, since Hardin had been the wizard's lieutenant from year, for years. She pulled you in close and said she thought it was because Hardin was a deceased husk of a man, no longer fit for any real job. She said if you want to see him, she talked to Madame Bye-Bye. A hot breath on your neck. She asked her if you want anything else. Um, let's see what they've got on tap. And see, we could buy a shaman's pipe, which increases maximum luck. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a consumable, so I don't know, not that. I'm going to buy a shaman's pipe. Yeah? Yeah, I've All got right. a reason for that. It's because there's another location which is a shaman's place. Oh, so you think it's, it's maybe used for that? Yeah, maybe. So okay. let's confirm and trade. Mm -hmm. um, isn't there a farm opposite? Maybe the Vicarious, now that we've chilled them out. Um, Let's do that. I'm, sure. I'm happy with that. Um, this had once been a thriving town. Now it's reduced to a single bar. The Vicarious run by the former mayor, Marshal Todd Maybe. It seemed to cure and tobacco with anything that's sold on the Forsaken Road. Uh, we can go in the bar. CD mix of Kyle Boys and Low Life. Um... We can look at the trade. Following barflies owed money to the bar. These couldn't be real names, could they? You so amazing. <laughs> you so uh -huh. amazing. Zim Jack James. Sping Dr. Mario. Sup Erty Cop. <laughs> Richie Judge Nowski. Adam Viper Pliskin. Cthulhu <laughs> Hedron. Eric Doidle. And Satish Sharma. Do you want to screenshot that in case it's important? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, let's browse the shop quickly. Um, some good stuff in here, but I'm going to save my money. I think yeah. I messed up with the brothel, by the way, so I'm going back there. Um, so we're going to return oh, because there. because we didn't talk to... Yeah, Madam Bye Bye. So let's go to... Yeah, let's talk to the talk madam. To the yeah, yeah. Anyway. James Ross came up by by assistant, let you through the door and followed close behind you. The room was adorned with p paper mache decorations and china. In the centre of the room, like a dare, stood a massive safe cabinet. You heard someone clear her throat and turned to see Emma bye bye looking at you, disapproving. Um, and we can ask the price of Hardin's freedom. Emma bye bye looked at her assistant and two startled gig uh, started giggling. Then burst out into laughter. You attempted to shut their mouths with guns. Seeing your consternation, bye bye explained. She only did business with important pe uh, people. You mentioned your role in a masked man's death. Mam said that hardly compared to being a trusted ally of the wizard and the leader of a feared and respected organisation. You wondered aloud whether she's confusing the word ally with henchman. She looked at you dispassionately as she lit a cigarette on a long slender filter. She asked why you're interested in a worthless son of a motherless goat like Harden. She inquired as to whether you ran a charity for cripples and hobos. Uh, and then in combat mode, we could um, lightning swiftness. You pulled the assistant's gun from his holster and shot him in the stomach. Or struggling with tem temper, you managed to no. Mm. I'm going to say no. I don't think she's done enough to. I mean, you know. Yeah, okay. Sure. She laughed disdainfully. She asked her assistant to buy you a drink, then escort you from the pre premises. Now we can shoot. Or we can refuse a drink left on miss and they would live to regret this. 
Oh, screw it. Shoot. Let's go for combat. Combat's fun. Yeah. Um, but join us next time when we'll go straight into some combat. It's for me and Bartmoss. Bye-bye. See you.